आज का सेशन शुरू करते हैं आप सबको खुश आमदेद ब्लैक होल में और आज हमें बड़ी खुशी है कि बीना सरवर आज वक्त निकाल पाई हैं हमारे साथ गुफ्तु करने के लिए तारुफ तो आपके सामने हो गया कि बीना जो हैं वो एक एक्टिविस्ट हैं बहुत काम करती हैं मुख्तलिफ लेवल्स के ऊपर फिल्में भी बनाती हैं और लिखती भी हैं और पढ़ती भी हैं और पीस एक्टिविस्ट हैं एक सब जिसे कहना चाहिए कि अनथक किस्म की पीस एक्टिविस्ट हैं ये जब से मैंने इनको जाना है तब से मैं देख रहा हूँ कि मुसलसल ये उस वक्त से जबकि पहली मरतबा पाकिस्तान इंडिया पीपल्स फोरम फॉर पीस एंड डेमोक्रेसी नाम का इदारा जो है वो वजूद में आया था और उस वक्त से मैं देखता हूँ कि ये हर हर तहरीक के अंदर बहुत ज़्यादा एक्टिव एक्टिव रहती हैं और आजकल भी ये एक इदारा है जिसका ये तारुफ खुद कराएंगी सपन नाम है साउथ एशिया पीस नेटवर्क तो ये ये जो है ये आ, आ, एक ऐसा नेटवर्क है कि जो आजकल मेरा ख़्याल है सबसे ज़्यादा एक्टिव है पाकिस्तान इंडिया पीपल्स फोरम फॉर पीस एंड डेमोक्रेसी बहुत अरसे तक बड़ा एक्टिव रहा अब काफ़ी अरसे से डॉर्मेंट है इसको शुरू करने वालों में डॉक्टर मुबशर हसन थे आई रहमान थे डॉक्टर इकबाल अहमद थे उधर इंडिया से बहुत बड़े बड़े वहाँ के पीस एक्टिविस्ट थे इंटेलेक्चुअल्स थे और इसकी स्ट्रेंथ जो थी वो इसकी इंटेलेक्चुअल स्ट्रेंथ थी इसमें इन लोगों ने एक विजन दिया कि हमें आ, हमें दोनों मुल्कों को पीसफुल तरीके से रहना होगा आ, इसके इसने लोगों को आपस में पीपल टू पीपल डायलॉग किस्म की चीज़ जो है वो ख़ास तौर पे उन्होंने शुरू की और उसके नतज बड़े अच्छे रहे तो ये जो है सपन ये भी मेरा ख्याल है अब सफ़न के बारे में मैं इनसे सवाल करता हूँ बीना से बीना जो है ये आ, एक लिहाज से इनको हम इस लिहाज से भी जानते हैं कि इनके वालदे बहुत प्रोमिनट शख्सियात थे वाल डॉक्टर मोहम्मद सरवर जो जिन्होंने डेमोक्रेटिक स्टूडेंट्स फेडरेशन की कराची में बुनियाद रखी थी उसके लीडर थे और सादिया के वाले डॉक्टर मंजूर अहमद ये दोनों साथ पढ़ते थे मेडिकल कॉलेज में जब 19 अर्ली 1950s में स्टूडेंट्स मूवमेंट चली थी तो ये ये इनकी वालदा जो हैं वो यहाँ पे इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज टीचिंग के बारे में बहुत बड़ी अच्छी मुहिम चलाती रही स्पेल्ट नाम की Society for the Promotion of English Language Teaching और अब आजकल रिटायरमेंट के बाद वो अमरीका में मुंतकिल हो गई हैं तो ये इनका एक ऐसा तारुफ है जो मेरा ख्याल था ज़रूरी था अब इस वक्त बीना कुछ रह गया तो अपना तारुफ कराइए काफ़ी तारुफ कर लिया अच्छा अब आप तारुफ करवाइए सपन का कि सपन क्या है मूवमेंट क्या है तो एक्चुअली जैसे आपने कहा कि हम बहुत अरसे से पी आई पी एफ पी डी चला रहे थे पाकिस्तान इंडिया पीपल्स फोरम फॉर पीस एंड डेमोक्रेसी और उसमें वो पीपल टू पीपल कन्वेंशन हो रहे थे uh, जो कि कई शहरों में हुए इन इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान बोथ कराची हैदराबाद दक्कन uh, आवाज़ सही सही आ रही है uh, हैदराबाद दक्कन कलकत्ता पेशावर दिल्ली अलाहाबाद हैदराबाद सिंध तो काफ़ी जगहों पे ये कई कई साल हम लोग ये करते रहे थे आप भी उसमें शामिल थे इनिशली ईयर्स में फिर 2010 में आई वाज इन्वॉल्व विद अमन की आशा जो कि जंग ग्रुप और टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया ने शुरू किया था तो मैं उसका वेबसाइट अभी तक उसका है आप देखेंगे अमन की तो वो अभी तक मैं उसको चला रही हूँ हालाँकि दोनों मीडिया ऑर्गनाइजेशन ने तकरीबन एक तरह से उसको थोड़ा सा साइड लाइन मतलब दे नॉट इन दैट दे अदर प्रायोरिटीज़ ऑफिशियली बंद बंद नहीं टू पीपल हु वुड लाइक लाइक अस टू स्पीक इन इंग्लिश आल्सो जी तो इंग्लिश में ट्रांसफर हो जाए अच्छा स्विच कर रहे हैं ओके ओके सो अमन की आश सो पाक सो दीज टू टू पीपल टू पीपल इंडिया पाकिस्तान मूवमेंट्स पाकिस्तान इंडिया पीपल्स फोरम फॉर पीस एंड डेमोक्रेसी एंड अमन की आशा Uh, you know, I think they really created a lot of movement, and Aman ki Aasha really mainstreamed peace in a way, which okay, took it out of the intellectual circles and onto the ordinary people, IT entrepreneurs, business people, uh, students, young log. So, it was a lot of excitement. A lot of people got very excited about it, and for a few years, it was very, very powerful. Aman ki Aasha, and uska, like I said, the website is still there that I do. But then, 
we realized and we noticed as you all know that every time we go towards some kind of uh, peaceful relations between India and Pakistan, something happens that one side or the other says that we will not We will not speak and all, you know, all, all, all linkages finish. So what happened was that there was, I think, 2021, something had happened as, you know, every happens periodically. So some of us got together online in March 2021. I think you were there at that first meeting or I invited you, but you didn't come, whatever. Couldn't come, couldn't <laughs> you, come. you couldn't come. Magar, there were about 80 of us online and we had a meeting for about three hours. We had a plenary speaker. We had a uh, closing speakers. We had breakout rooms. We had moderators, rapporteurs. Uh, we documented, you know, all the what people was talking about in the breakout rooms, different topics, uh, media, um, students, uh, economics, health. Okay, there were seven, eight, and there were like, you know, like senior people were moderating each breakout room, and we had different people uh, doing the rapporteuring. So at the end of it, we passed a resolution that we will start, we will have this new sort of, I wouldn't call it an idara, it's not an institution, it's a coalition. It's a coalition of peace, uh, of people and organizations that um, are, have a similar common goal that we want peace in the region. So we are taking this out of like, you know, India, Pakistan, we're moving it out of that thing, of that bilateral thing, which is important to keep doing but to take a regional view, regional approach to all issues because we said that all issues in each of our countries in the region are linked and they are connected and they are mushtarka, they are very common issues whether it is human rights, whether it is education and some countries are better than others at health and education and stuff but in all our regional countries we have a very bad record of many, for many things and also there are many good things that we can learn from each other so we started this thing and it kind of we didn't have any plan, we didn't have any, it's not a registered NGO. It has a fiscal sponsor, which means that uh, we have um, a, a, t a registered organization in the States that will, that if we get any, don whatever little donations we get, have got so far, that organization takes care of the tax and accounting and the accountability and all that, the financial accountability. And uh, this is not a registered organization. So we were having we started having uh, meetings, uh, online meetings, on the last Sunday of every month. And um, on the last Sunday of every month, and some of those, uh, mostly, I mean, we've had about 17 or 18 such discussions and dialogues on various issues, and we've had people, we have had speakers from all the countries around the region, including Afghanistan and Bhutan and Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh, and not just India, Pakistan. So we have to... Um, thank you for thank you for coming. Kishor Naid. Um, it's our honor to have you here. So we've been having these monthly discussions and then from those monthly discussions have grown have, have has emerged another initiative which is um, a media outlet, a media outlet which provides syndicated features. Syndicated means that the material, the articles we write or, or, or generate, they get published in media outlets literally around the world. From we have some, There's an organization, a media outlet in Australia that has published our features, Seattle, Washington, Atlanta, Georgia, New York, and also, of course, in the region, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, not so much, a few, few in Sri Lanka and pa Pakistan. So that news media outlet uh, has, a, we, we just call it Sapan News. So it's sapannews.com. So if you go to sapannews.com, but not now, they don't take out your cell phones because Nayar has very strictly said not to. But if you go to sapannews.com and subscribe to it, so that will, you know, help us and strengthen us. And for South Asia Peace, the website is southasiapeace.com. And both these websites have been entirely made by a volunteer a journalist friend. Um, so this is the work we are doing right now. So, 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 so this uh, organization, Sapan, was uh, uh, started in, in, in South Asia. Your no, it's first online, convocation? online only. Online only. Online, online. only. So we had people joining from, Bo from Boston, New York, London, uh, uh, Holland, uh, West Coast in America. Uh, in, and, and all the regional countries in, in South Asia. So most of the people in Sapan 
are in South Asia. There are a few in the expat community as well. So we are connecting re the people in the region, within the region, across countries, intergenerational because our youngest are probably in their teens and the oldest are in their 90s. So we, we try and have this cross-pollination, learning from each other and um, uh, cross diaspora, you know, connecting diaspora with local, with, you know, activists on the ground and not just activists, but, you know, all kinds of issues. Like, I think one of our best sessions was about sports women, sports women, challenges and wins. So if you go to the SouthAsiaPeace.com website and you look for sports women or you go to SapanNews.com and you look for sports women, you'll come across the, that discussion. It's also there on the YouTube channel. And we had, um, you know, women like I mean, Sana Mir was also there, the Pakistan mm. uh, swimmer from uh, Sri Lanka, tennis player from Nepal. And the powerful thing about that session was, you know, challenges and wins. That we, what really came out strongly was that women across the region have, no matter what the education level and whatever, have faced similar issues, similar challenges, but they have all also have the similar struggles, but the kind of wins they have had, the kind, way they have overcome those challenges. So that's just one, you know, and we've done uh, discussions on climate change and, and uh, environment and health and human rights, like uh, the rights of prisoners the, or the incarcerated yeah. across the region, you know, how many, what is the capacity of prisons, uh, when were they built, how, what is, what is the capacity, what is the, the overcrowding, the lack, and then also the, um, um, the, the, out of the box, like some open prisons or like the rehabilitation efforts, you know, to, to reduce the prison population. So all kinds of uh, things we've had. Those are the issues that you have, that Sapan has Yeah, many, many, many issues. Yeah, 17, 18 Times. discussions we've had so far. Mm. Um, has it been easier to manage it from outside or would it have been easier to manage it from, from I within think, South uh, Asia? Yeah, I think from, I think to manage it from within, <coughs> from inside South Asia, would have been very, very difficult um, because of the kind of, you know, when you're living here, I mean, there are people, like I said, most of the people are in South Asia, are in the region. But because I'm outside, I'm based mostly in Boston now. So it, give, it allows me a little bit of a, um, allows me to pull back a little, not get so embroiled in domestic politics and, you know, the, the, what's happening on the ground and to take a longer view and to take a wider, uh, take a wider lens and a longer view. And I think that is very important. I think it's very important for the local activism in each country to carry on. But at the same time, we also need this. And it's like I said, it's a coalition. So there's about 40 organizations that have endorsed our founding charter. I mean, people can are still continuing to do that. Black Hole is most welcome to. Uh, I think you have endorsed it. Uh, Pervez has endorsed it. Uh, and people, you can go to SouthAsiaPeace.com, founding charter just has three basic points. You know, to allow people to meet soft borders or visa on arrival and um, allow trade and travel and all that and to cooperate on all issues in related to human rights and democracy and three basic very small it's a very small charter and it is available online in hindi urdu punjabi bangla malayalam um, and other languages great great so so, so this uh, uh, idea of uh, south asian union um, I think it has been around for quite a while. So it was Dr. Mubashir Hassan. Mubashir Hassan. Bless his soul. Idea. Who many years ago, I mean, I used to, I used to live in Lahore. Mm -hmm. So who, who at that time, uh, you know, once he said to me, okay, you know, if we can have a South, uh, European Union, if we can have a South Asia Why Union, South Union Asia, yeah. if France and Germany can be friends who have been enemies for centuries, mm -hmm. why can't India and Pakistan? Of course, the geopolitical reality is different and the historic Things. There's a lot of differences. I'm not. We're not saying it's the same situation, but <coughs> we are seeing that countries that are uh, see each other not as friends are still at least carrying on trade. America, China, dekhle aap, India, China, dekhle, um, and so many other examples. So the biggest kulhari jo humne apne paon pe mari hai, the biggest um, you know the way, it's like cutting off the branch we are sitting on is to say that we will not trade with India. Because now what's happened, billions of dollars of trade is going, happen, taking place via the Middle East. And it's benefiting who? People in the Middle East. And the cooperation within the societies, like for example, my mother, like you mentioned, Society of Pakistan English Language Teachers, SPELT, they have an annual international conference. Up now, because of online options, they've been having the last couple of years have been mm. online as well. but. They, you know, our, our issues are so similar in India and Pakistan, 
and they've been a couple of times they got Indian teachers to come to the in annual international conference. But it was so hard to get the visas, so hard to get the visas. Yeah. And then you know, after that, when the te when the teachers come, then the way the intelligence you know gets after them. Not just here, donut taraf hota hai. But it's really, I mean, I think that the two countries really need to fix their relations. But we as people, as activists on the ground or like who don't have any influence on government policy, so what can we do? Right. So all we, I can only do what I can do, which I know how to do is to raise awareness, raise a voice and as a journalist to keep raising the issue and that's why Sapan News basically aims to further the narrative of regionalism, peace and dialogue. So, but the moves that used to exist earlier of uh, uh, visits to the other side and uh, meeting more people and talking over and uh, spending time over there, uh, that sort of has reduced a great deal yes. between India and Pakistan. And is it because of kind of fatigue that comes with uh, sort of running a particular movement or is it because of the attitudes of the two governments? The governments, they don't give visas. It is so hard to get visas. People, people's, uh, and, and not just for peace activists, ko aap chhodne. people who, you know, somebody, like there's so many people, I mean, everybody here knows, there are people here I know whose family, who have family across the border, you know, somebody is on their deathbed, somebody is having a marriage, somebody is ill. You know, um, one young man told me that his mother, she had got married from, in, as come to Pakistan as a young woman when she got married. So the rest of her family is in India. He said, Eid pe, I'll say it in Urdu, then I'll translate, ke Eid pe, un Skype ya Zoom pe, whatever, choti band se baat ho rahi thi in Delhi. And the mother said to the, his mother said to the khala, his khala, ke baby Eid Mubarak. And then they both just sat there with tears in their eyes and could not speak for the next 10 minutes. Mm. So they were having this conversation and trying to, you know, wish each other for Eid, but they were so choked up across the border that they couldn't speak. And it is, I mean, uh, uh, this one man I know who's uh, uh, Rajput, um, you know, from Soda clan in Pakistan, the only Rajput uh, uh, clan in Pakistan is the Soda clan in Tharparkar, Amarkot, ke jo Rana hai, the only principality, Hindu principality in Pakistan, Rana Hamir Singh. Uh, who, who did not go to India, uh, they were, you know, uh, invited to go, but they didn't go. So, this Rajput Sodas, Pakistan ke jo hain, because unka Gothra ka masla hota hai, their clan, they are not allowed to marry within the Gothra. They have to marry outside that to another, but they have to marry a Rajput, but from another clan. So, all the women in, in our court are married, uh, uh, when, they, when the girls grow up, they marry across the border in India. And all the men there, the wives have come from India. And this man, his wife had also come from India. She passed away. He married again, again also from India. And uh, Gan Ganpat Singh, his name is, and he's now in India, but he's getting his kids married off. And he applied eight times for a visa. And his mother was dying across the border. This is Amar Kot. His mother was in uh, Jaipur or something. And it's like three hours drive across the border. And she was dying of cancer. And uh, she made a video appealing to the Indian government to give her son a visa. And he was not given a visa yeah. and his mother died and yeah. he couldn't go. So he was finally able to go after eight attempts. So I've written about that case also. That's also on the Sapan News website. But uh, the, there's a hardening of attitudes, particularly we see on the Indian side. And in Pakistan also it's difficult. I mean, it's just, they just, it's uh, like, it's something that would benefit our economy, our people, our, but the, the excuse they give is security. So what we say is, okay, you know, do your due diligence, do your due you know, uh, thing, and, but let people come. You know, the late Asma Jahangir once said, she said, if you open the visas of India and Pakistan, there will be a flood on both sides wanting to visit. And especially young people, I think, who don't have the baggage. So, there's another um, uh, thing that people think that it's only the Punjabis, the divided Punjab, who want to visit across the border. This issue really concerns the Punjabis. But I know that there are a lot of people, young people, younger people, 
हमारे तो बाल सफ़ेद हो गए ये काम कर करके बट पीपल यंगर पीपल हु हैव नो लाइक फैमिली और लैंड और एनी थिंग ऑन आई दाइड बट हु रियली वॉन्ट टू विजिट टू एक्सपीरियंस द कल्चर जस्ट टू यू नो ट्रैवल साइकिल देर वॉज वन यंग गाय फ्राम दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी उसने तीन दफ़ा ही डिड अ साइकिल यात्रा फ्राम केरला टू अमृतसर पीस विद पाकिस्तान कॉलिंग फॉर पीस विद पाकिस्तान एंड you know along the way he got great reception from the villagers but pakistan would never give him a, he wanted to go up to peshawar or at least cross the border into lahore he was never given a visa now i think the only travelers are the yatris yes so religious six, tourism so yeah yes. the religious tourism is the only thing that is uh, uh, alive yeah, at that time, and also right? there are a couple ikke dukke you know some some individuals will but get I a visa but that the medical uh, will be bahut kam ho gaya also. very really? that has also reduced there was a huge move when i was with aman ki asha yeah. i mean aman ki asha we did a, we did something the number of pakistani used to children hmm. we have in pakistan a very large number of children with congenital heart defects and that has a lot to do with cousin marriages which we which we keep glorifying mm. in our tv serials which i wish somebody would write about and you know protest against but anyway so uh, we did this we would we publicize the fact that if your child has this issue we can help them so the rotarians on both sides of india and pakistan they really facilitated mm. hundreds of children to go across and have these surgeries because pakistan mein there's good cardiac surgery but not for pediatric and um, but then you know after 2014 even that has come trickled you know very ikka dukka like once in a while they'll do it once in a while they'll give a visa to somebody or the other and it will become a big thing they've done a huge favor wow 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 reena verma ko pune se you let her come to visit her ancestral hall in home in pindi wow wow we let them come why just reena reena verma you know why just the man who uh, whose brother he hadn't seen for 75 years and then they met in kartarpur and by the way i went to kartarpur last sunday mm-hmm. kartarpur sahab It was an amazing experience, and I'm puch kaj bhi hui because a friend of mine, a journalist who had made these websites, she was coming with her husband from Delhi, and they came and met. So it was a very, very moving experience to meet them. Mm. Uh, but us taraf se they got harassed by the immigration and customs, and is taraf I got you know pulled aside and asked a lot of questions. It's, it's fine. I'll um, mm. ask whatever questions you want, you know, but don't stop us from meeting. But at at Kartarpur Sahab. the amazing thing is you see locals get these blue uh, st- sorry blue strings with the ba- with the uh, you know the, uh, the card tag. the not not a name tag it's that card you know the, the, the digitized plastic card that is linked to your id card so when yeah. you return your digitized card then they know immediately whose id card it is they match it so mm-hmm. that you don't switch places with somebody and go off on the other side which is fine you have to have security you have to take those security measures um the place was very clean the staff was very courteous they showed us around they you know gave us a very good uh, this thing but they also are very no- we had to pass four police check posts to reach to get into kartarpur sahab so the locals have a blue string and the uh, yatris have a yellow string so you can see that who is the indian and who is the pakistani and the amazing thing is you know that so khabar mumtaz was with us and she was standing yes, there yes i saw the pictures and uh, this woman uh was uh, she was standing on her own uh, cover and this woman said ke you know mere dad ke ek gaon us paas hai my ancestors village is just a few miles that way so khabar uh, said ke you know afsos kya pa nahi ja sakti sorry you, sorry you can't go there so the woman said it doesn't matter i've met you and she just gave her a hug mm. and teared up mm. just to you know so and in the shopping area you could see people like looking at each other and sometimes talking to each other and you know t- comparing notes and you know like saying that you know people uh, it's so nice to meet you so nice to meet a pakistani so nice to meet an indian but it shouldn't be like this this, is, this should be normal hmm. Hmm. no but there, there was a time when uh, there were the cross border um, visits were very common and people used to just go and visit and see and, and of course so bahut pehle ki baat kar rahe they could just go and watch a movie in amritsar come back that's before the 65 oh, no, that war. was yeah, that <laughs> before was before prehistoric times yeah prehistoric <laughs> times in the early 50s yeah. at the most yeah so 65 yeah. war tak 65 war tak till the 65 war until 65 war yeah, yeah okay so but um why have seen, why have <clears throat> things deteriorated to this level why do you think that has happened that's a really good question it has to do with probably real politics security 
establishments on either side, the rising hardening of nationalist, hyper-nationalist attitudes, hyper-religiosity, uh, you know, and, and so on. But I think that what we are trying to do, what we say, if you let people meet, and by the way, there's also a petition online which everybody can go and sign. It's change.org slash milnedo, M-I-L-N-E-T-O. So that's got 37, 38,000 signatures right now, and we wanted to reach 50,000, so please spread the word. It's addressed to the prime ministers of all three countries, and we'll change the... You will write the uh, URL over here. We can write after the, after the... Yeah, yeah, I'll write all three. So I'll write all three. I'll write all three. Note it down. All three of them I'll write. But, I mean, so uh, there's the... There's a, and then I think the, that... Um, you know, in Pakistan, I think the lack of a democratic political process and the fact that we have played, done these proxy wars in Kashmir and in India, then they see an opportunity in Balochistan. And then there's this whataboutery. If you talk about, uh, you know, human rights in Kashmir, they'll say, but what about Balochistan? So what we are saying is that let people, you know, talk about your own, like, Talk about the commonalities, talk about what you can do together, how you can overcome these things. And, you know, don't point fingers and don't do the blame game. Because when you do that, then you just, it just escalates and escalates and escalates. There will be a section of people who will continue doing that. They will, but the point yeah. is that uh, yeah. um, if you want people to meet more often, the, somehow the visa regime will have to be softened. Now, that, for that particular thing, there will have to be some, some move for, for, for easy visas on the two sides, some, some kind of at least negotiations between the two countries on various issues. They are not talking to each other. They, it's a, so, 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 so they haven't even implemented, 2012 May, they implemented a visa regime, which yeah. according to which people over 60 can get a visa on arrival. Right. That has not been implemented. Right. I think four or five people from India have come on that with that particular thing. And I think I, almost nobody from Pakistan has gone to India on the that. Only or maybe a few is, couple yeah, of them. The plans. only, only, only um, uh, plan that works at the moment is that all the parliamentarians can go across Gee. without visa. Judges also. And the judges also can go across. But other than that... <laughs> so uh, I just met... Uh, 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 retired judge in Lahore who had just gone across with his family and they can go to different cities also. Hmm. Like uh, when ordinary citizens apply for a visa, we get city specific visas. You can only go to those particular cities. There is yeah. police reporting on arrival and departure, uh, 24 hmm. hours before arrival, 24 hours after departure. And um, reporting, police reporting. Police reporting, well. Wait, police hmm. reporting. Hmm. And, and, uh, but uh, we, we say that it's okay, but it's okay, but it's okay, at least let people meet. But we, uh, we can't, unless the government is the visa regime. And so the 2012, so if you go to that change.org slash milnendowala petition online, so that outlines the 2012 um, visa agreement. That they, So we are saying implement it. They were about to sign it, and then something happened in 2012. I forget which, well, which one of those events, and then, you know, they said. 2012? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. many, many things happened. Uh -huh. I mean, the last uh -huh. one was in... Uh, 2019, Pulwama was in 2019, was it not? Yeah. yeah. So that actually was the last event, and after that, I think things have become really very difficult. Have gone downhill. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, as far as um, uh, things stand at this time, we see no particular uh, reason to be uh, hopeful about. Easy visa regime. No, so visa regime. I don't think it's going to change right now. But what we are hoping for, like like I keep saying, you know, they got to do what they got to do, and we got to do what we got to do. So they are going to carry on doing whatever, right? But how can we, the people? How can people? What can we do as individuals to influence policy, to put pressure on the governments, to change things? For the sake of the people of the region, for the sake of economic betterment of the economic betterment of people in the region, mm. what can we, what can we as individuals do? In my view, I think we can come together as a collective and raise a collective voice for this, and that's hence that petition, that online milne mm. dovala, but on also to like you know come together. So like the SouthAsiaPeace.com, the um, founding charter, like I said, it's been signed by. It's, it's not a huge amount because we haven't, it's not a signature campaign, but it's been endorsed by 40 organizations and over 300, 300, 400 people. So everybody is welcome to go endorse it. 
Um, but you know, somehow to get that to the governments, to use whatever influence we can, wherever we can, and talk about it. Yeah, uh, recently we had one uh, talk over here by Dr. Ijaz Nabi, the economist. Mm -hmm. And um, he described India-Pakistan relations and it, I think he had very nice suggestions, particularly uh, urging Pakistan to uh, let things flow through Pakistan from one side to yeah. the other yeah. and become a passageway for yes. uh, trade and so mm -hmm. on. And he said that, that Pakistan uh, uh, stands to gain a great deal Absolutely. by that. Yes. But in describing that, he said some things, but the response from Indian readers, Indian observers to, to that talk uh, was really discouraging. It's yes. really discouraging for him. Yes. So they, they were, they, they were, uh, they were very, they, they was more like trolls. Yeah. More yeah. like, you know, he, well, he just said that there was a time when uh, there was a term coined uh, 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 Hindu rate of growth. So that Indians were very unhappy about it. Hindu rate of growth. Why? He explained later on that, look, this is not a term invented by me. This was invented by an Indian economist, mm -hmm. a very famous Indian economist, who said that year after year, after decade after decade, India is not growing very rapidly. So there is something to do with, you know, etc., etc. But the uh, response from Indian uh, 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 viewers was uh, really very discouraging, mm -hmm. as if they hold a great deal of grudge against yes. um, whatever is being said from this side. So I just want to say one thing here about social media, which I think is very, yeah, very relevant. Yeah, social media okay. is important. So you've all heard of Maria Ressa, the Nobel laureate, the journalist, yeah. right? So Maria Ressa uses a term called astroturf, that the social media is like astroturf, fake grass. It gives an illusion of reality, which is not really there. And we have been seeing that social media, we see people who uh, are on social media will say things on social media that they will not say to your face. We've seen this, we've all seen and experienced this. I think that people who use social media need to engage in a responsible, ethical way, in the way that journalists are supposed to, which they don't always, of course, but you know, to no name calling, no personal attacks, um, to, uh, in, uh, to um, you know, verify in journalism, we have something called two source verification before forwarding something that is outrageous or triggering, check, check, the, check out about it and, and context, add the context. Don't just forward things, you know, just like that. So, ek to ye baat hai. Dusri baat ye ke, some of you might, might know about the, um, uh, uh, the, one of the first cross-border websites was called chalk.com. Chalk, how, yes. how many people have heard of chalk.com? Some of you have heard of chalk.com. Mm. So chalk.com, when it started in the 90s, it was the first such cross-border thing and it was excellent. Okay, but slowly, slowly, we started seeing this trollish behavior from people. And what happens is that when one, uh, somebody in, makes a trollish comment, somebody else gets provoked and makes another. And so then you get into this tutu meme. Okay. So we, I asked the chalk people, I said, you know, like, you should have a moderated thing, but they couldn't, capacity anything. So, but that phenomenon has only increased. And so, I would not get discouraged by the people who make those trollish comments. And I also actually think that everybody who has whatever social media pages they have, you put a little uh, note on it saying that any comments that don't abide by the rules of uh, my rules, this is my page, my platform, my forum, to not be abusive, to, to verify news and, you know, whatever, to be civil and to engage in a civil manner. So just delete those comments because yeah. what they do is, what those comments do is, and, and this is not censorship. This is having a, some kind of ethics standards and following a code of behavior. Right. And uh, because what, what happens is when people post those things, it, it discourages, like you said, it becomes discouraging. And then people who want to engage m meaningfully are afraid to because they will get attacked. Right. So I think when you are engaging on, if you are, I am assuming everybody here is, has <coughs> some social media account or the other, raise your hands if you have one or more social media account, WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. So pretty much everybody has something or the other. 
if you are if you are if you have that then i think you have a responsibility to engage in a responsible ethical way and to encourage people who come to your page or your platform to do the same because otherwise you know we are just getting drowned under this deluge and you know the other side has armies paid armies of trolls unka kaam hi hai that's their job is to go to everything that is anything positive and like say nasty things about the person they're not going to talk about the issue because they have no real answer so they'll attack the person then people will get provoked and people will reply and then you'll get into the spiral ignore that ignore delete khatam hum to ab yahan pakistan mein bade aadi ho gaye hamari siyasat ke andar ye hone laga hai na mukhalif party ke waste trolls ke army jo hai wo piche lag jati hai to ye to hai acha ye bataye ki ek zamane mein aapne wo ek bade bade paimane ke upar ek meeting ki thi online meeting ki thi उस ऑनलाइन मीटिंग के दूसरे और एडिशंस क्यों नहीं हुए क्या वो कारामत नहीं थी चीज ऐसी जिस जब सपन बन, जब सपन बनी नहीं हम वी हैव बीन हैविंग वी हैव बीन हैविंग वी हैव रेगुलर मीटिंग्स वी हैड ऑन आवर ऑन आवर फर्स्ट एंड सेकंड एनिवर्सरीज वी आल्सो हैड बिग मीटिंग्स क्या क्या कोई कोई फ्रीक्वेंसी है उनकी वेल वी मीट ऑन द लास्ट संडे ऑफ एवरी मंथ और नाउ इट्स बिकम एवरी सेकेंड मंथ ऑन द लास्ट संडे इट इज लाइक सेवन थर्टी पी एम पाक सेवन और सेवन थर्टी पी एम पाकिस्तान टाइम टेन ओ क्लॉक ईस्टर्न टाइम यू नो सेवन ओ क्लॉक वेस्टर्न टाइम यू एस जस्ट टू ट्राई एंड एंगेज पीपल अक्रॉस और सपन की वेबसाइट के ऊपर ये इवेंट्स आर देर सब्सक्राइब टू द साउथ एशिया पीस डॉट कॉम वेबसाइट यू विल गेट द अपडेट्स के ये इवेंट होने वाला है वट एवर यू कैन रजिस्टर साउथ एशिया पीस डॉट कॉम डॉट कॉम एंड देन यू विल गेट द अपडेट्स एंड वी सेंड आउट न्यूज लेटर्स वी पास सेवरल रेजोल्यूशन दैट हैव बीन यू नो बिकॉज वी आर असूमिंग दैट पीपल हु चार्टर will so we just put out a resolution like we put out one resolution most recently about this attack in punch the day before eid with the rush, the, the uh, sikh uh, soldiers who were five sikh soldiers were killed by an uh, attack uh, ambush on a indian army convoy that was taking iftar to villagers at, at punch so whatever that might have been their own way of whitewashing or whatever you know you can but the fact is that five people were killed who were bringing iftar to villagers and that was that came just before this seo meeting in goa which is happening now and you know so we put out a resolution or a statement say you know condemning that attack in punch and saying that we support and welcome bilawal bhutto zardari's um, you know uh, attendance of the meeting in goa which a lot of people already we are seeing us are saying he shouldn't go or ye wo and all that. so i think that it is incumbent upon us to raise our voice in support of any even if it's not a bilateral dialogue to raise our voices in support and to what we are trying to do is to forge our own narrative rather than reacting to the narrative of others to to say positive things and not right. say negative things not we are, we don't we, we're not just condemning things and saying ki ye bura hua wo bura hua we try we are trying to provide some kind of solutions or forward looking way to look at things to put a context to it to take the long view तो वैसे तो पीस मूवमेंट्स जो हैं उनको थोड़ी सी कोशिश ये भी करनी चाहिए कि गवर्नमेंट्स जो बिल्कुल एक दूसरे से कटी हुई हैं नाराज़ हैं उनके दरमियान कुछ रास्ते बनाने की कोशिश करें सो हैज़ देर बिन एनी एफर्ट इन दैट डायरेक्शन I think is it really we know we need to hmm. we do need to engage with policy makers and government right. and all that but I think right now we need to get a bigger constituency we need to get people you know to uh, engage in a more proactive way um and to uh, like say everybody who's here whatever number of people who are here if everybody you know makes it a point to you know forward or you know share reshare or something five minutes spend in a day with the you know like positive kind of hashtag or something you know, maybe we start making a dent in the dominant narrative but i don't know i mean i think it's a very difficult uh, yeah, yeah yeah i mean it is and we are like drop we are like a drop in the ocean but then like you know somebody says ke katre katre se samundar banta hai it's the drops that make the ocean and yes the negative drops are bigger than our and more in number than our positive drops but we need to but we need to keep doing what we need to do lekin aap logo ki jo monthly meeting hoti hai ya bi monthly meeting ab aapne kaha ki hai in logon mein unme ye point raise karne karne ki shayad zarurat hai ki hum ye 
loud thinking kare ke kaise isko so we have not been having these brain the meetings we are having have not been brainstorming about this because uske upar bahut kuch ho chuka hai we've done a lot of you know how and there is not much what what we are doing right now is basically talking about issues that concern the region and even beyond like indian uh, indian ocean we can also include you know in that uh, south asia and indian ocean so like the next meeting we want to do the, on the last sunday of may i think it's going to be on chat gpt and artificial intelligence and the impact that will have on on the region on us so we we take up we, these meetings are not brainstorming meetings so much because we've done a lot of brain, everybody knows what needs to be done visas and things like that right allow people to meet that's the basic thing so what we are right now trying to do is we like connect about issues you know like we had an issue, we had one meeting on labor rights across the region labor issues uh, the, the 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 plight of sanitation workers and I, you know such a huge issue you know people going into gutters and you know like the kind of that is and i'm so glad to know that some uh, our friend named sadik in karachi has they uh, and others have made some kind of a little machine that will that can do that job that humans can operate so they don't have to go without any face mask gloves you know nothing they're going into gutters to clean up mm-hmm. gutters we uh, had had a, a, a session on um, uh, like uh, on uh, sports women come as a climate change and environment how that impacts we've had a session on arts and activism on music and mystics on in february we talked about love across borders uh, uh, you know and not just not just love across india pakistan or other borders but you know across caste class religious divides uh, which leads to violence what we call honor killings and it's not really limited only to you know whenever something like that happens in pakistan we start beating ourselves oh we are such a terrible society oh but it's not that it justifies it but this is a part of a socio cultural historical phenomenon that is there across the north north india indo gangetic belt particularly and even in sri lanka we have you know these across the communities buddhist catholic or whatever so to to put things in context right now we are just trying to connect issues connect the dots mm. and connect people who are like you know uh, like connect physicians connect uh, students connect labor leaders and you know connect artists connect musicians mm. and you know like have people come on you know on their on their issues so we are not doing the brainstorming so much because i think enough brainstorming has been done we you know we need to now talk about you know what 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 how we can cooperate and how we can learn from each other okay so thank you very much for this uh, these thoughts and i think now we can take questions from uh, uh participants here audience here aap mein se jo हाँ माइक का इंतजार करना जरूरी है शुड आई पुट द लिंक्स अप इन द मीन टाइम हाँ वो वो लिख दें यहाँ पे ओके तीन तीन लिंक्स हैं ये अस्सलाम वालेकुम दिस इज इम्तियाज अली and uh, i think there are uh, problems on three uh, levels three tier problems between india and pakistan specifically first is the state level problem such as parwama and operation swift resort and second is the provincial level and this is the most dangerous problem uh, such as hijab issues in uh, one of the states of india and the third is people to people problem if a mosque gets destroyed uh, in india then it is necessary that and essential that for people of pakistan those who are religiously bent mindset they will destroy mandar in uh, pakistan so these are these, these are the three level problems so currently uh, uh, we are uh, focusing on people to people and we are trying to uh, soften that corner however the most dangerous one provincial level is uh, unaddressed pakistan or india mein provincial autonomy bahut zyada hai सच एज सिंध में जो गवर्नमेंट है वो उसमें सिंध हुकूमत की ज़्यादा चलती है पर फेडरल की इतनी ज़्यादा नहीं होती सो माई क्वेश्चन इज़ अगेन दैट वट कैन वी डू इन कमिंग टाइम्स टू सॉफ्ट इन दैट सेकेंड लेवल प्रोवेंशल लेवल एंड अगेन दैट फर्स्ट लेवल फेडरल लेवल सो आई एम गोन टू एक्चुअली आस्क फॉर थ्री फॉर पीपल टू नहीं खालिद हुसैन माई फॉर्मर एडिटर देयर so uh, both this uh, provincial autonomy thing is big all our nation, uh, national 
nationalistic politics, all left, right, our past, and our present debate always. The gentleman sounded like Saraiki. So our national angst is, you know, partitioned into provincial compartments. So that's very much there. But uh, much more than how a given administration is going to be run, eh? the real issues are <laughs> why are these conflicts in place? We cannot trace these conflicts when we go back in our history, in our tradition. Those are things where we can find the streams. We cannot find these streams in our present politics, in our present comparative narratives of uh, development, and the stuff that you young men are now learning in your universities. I mean, uh, I mean these things, these issues are there. I don't know what the question is really. I mean, these are the issues. This is this is the situation. And that's and it's important to observe and to point out. But you know, just a little uh, comment on you know, like you're saying that if the mosque is destroyed in India, we have to say something about it in Pakistan. So, so say something about it in Pakistan. But then also talk about we before you pointing fingers at others. So the, what we are doing with our minorities in Pakistan is there for all to see. When we say, when they say, uh, when we say that you've done this to your minorities, they will say, but what about? So that what about re will continue. Then you will just keep going into that tutu meme. So that's up to you. If you want to do that, please go ahead. But I don't think that solves anything, nor does it uh, take anything further. You, I think that we need to focus on our own issues set our own house in order first before we start telling others what to do or pointing fingers. Because for every human rights violation in India that is taking place, I can tell you that there's something in Pakistan as well. And maybe, maybe it's more in India because there are just population-wise, they are just you know, eight times more than Pakistan. So you know, numbers-wise, of course. So I don't think that will serve any purpose, I, my, my, my personal view. But I mean, of course, our, uh, our foreign policy experts and our government will then, सिंध के बारे में आप क्या कह रहे थे कि सिंध की सिंध में प्रोविंशियल ऑटोनॉमी जो है आपके ख्याल में क्या वो बहुत ज्यादा हां बहुत ज्यादा हो गई है तो खुश होने की बात है या अफसोस की बात है सर सर मैं यह कह रहा था कि यह अल्टीमेटली अफसोस की बात है टू बी टू बी ऑनेस्ट अल्टीमेटली अफसोस की बात है क्योंकि क्योंकि जो मेरा पॉइंट था वो यह था कि जो सेकंड लेयर है ना जो प्रोविंशियल लेवल वाली जैसे हिजाब इशूज होते हैं इंडिया में तो उनको फेडरल गवर्नमेंट ओन नहीं करती कौन फेडरल गवर्नमेंट ओन नहीं इंडिया की गवर्नमेंट हो गई बट द थिंग इज दैट यू कांट टेक ऑन एवरी फाइट एंड इफ यू आर टॉकिंग हिजाब इशू इन इंडिया इन पाकिस्तान वी हैव फॉट अगेंस्ट हिजाब फॉर्स्ट वेयरिंग ऑफ हिजाब एंड आई एक्चुअली रोट अ पीस अबाउट दिस बिकॉज ड्यूरिंग द जिया इयर्स व्हेन दे वर ट्राइंग टू पुश अस इन टू चादर एंड चार दीवारी वी हैव फॉट अगेंस्ट दिस इन पाकिस्तान एंड दे आर फाइटिंग टू वेयर इट इन इंडिया so that is their issue their thing to hum kyun usme padhe you know like uh, i mean that's my view but i mean we think that anybody who wants to wear can wear anybody who doesn't want to wear shouldn't have to wear it should not what you choose to wear or not should be your personal choice um so i wrote, i wrote something about this recently for open magazine it's i think it's on my blog or somewhere or the other but uh, on this issue because it's not a black and white issue there's a lot of history and context Do you know that the first mosque in this whole region? Where was the first mosque in this region built? Kerala, southernmost tip. Islam was not spread in this region by the Arab uh, by the invasion. It was spread through the merchants from the south of India, and the hijab issue has grown, you know, since the people went to the Middle East and the, you know, and we've seen that in Pakistan also. You know, we never even knew what a hijab was growing up. Suddenly, it's become the Islamic dress. It's not. It's a cultural. It's a Middle Eastern thing. It's a cultural construct. So these are things that have to be seen in context. I think. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first, uh, this whole discussion has understandably been very India-centric. So I would like to know uh, what uh, is the involvement of Afghans in Sapan because that is also. Uh, Afghanistan is also our immediate neighbor and one which with which we've had a very problematic continue to have a very problematic relationship that was number one the second one was that you mentioned that there are networks of students and teachers and doctors which Sapan has brought together if I understood correctly from both sides of the border 
So I would like to know how that is being done and how can that be expanded? Okay, so those are really good questions. Um, the, the first one, uh, well, we have some Afghans uh, in, in the, who've participated. We've invited them to speak also. They've participated also. Um, so also, also other, from the other countries, Bhutan also. Like, for example, um, there's, it's not a lot of people, but, you know, for example, Bhutan, major human rights violations over here. We had an op-ed on that in the Sapan News and the uh, Suraj who wrote that op-ed is uh, working on something very good. I think it's called Peace Initiative Bhutan. And it is about, when I heard him talk about that, I wish that somebody would replicate that in Balochistan because they are talking about a peace and reconciliation kind of a process and a truth and the um, South, South, South Africa. And you know, talking about restorative justice rather than retributive justice. So we can learn a lot from each other, I think. That's one thing. The networks of people that we are bringing together are very loose. We are, it's a co Sapan is a coalition. So, you know, people come together for these discussions and we are not, it's not a formal organization or network of any of these, but they, people exchange numbers, contacts, and you know, they sort of exchange, and that's a very important, that cross-pollination of views and uh, ideas and, um, uh, you know, just linkages, human linkages. Sabse pehle to wo hai. You know, people have come together and become friends or like, you know, and it's a, it's a slow process. But, you know, like you said, we really need to have a lot more uh, of, of it. So I don't know, I hope that answers your question. I am Ismail. Basically, my three questions, ma'am. Ma'am, you have used a good phrase that it is a tree that 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 is a तो उसको हम एक प्रैक्टिकल शेप में कैसे उसको यूटिलाइज करेंगे मेरे ख्याल से क्या पाकिस्तान और इंडिया के क्लेशेस की वजह से ये बेनिफिट नहीं हुआ है माय थ्री क्वेश्चन थर्ड क्वेश्चन इज दिस दैट के इंडिया इज दैट अलाउड थ्री क्वेश्चंस जस्ट किडिंग हाँ 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 सॉरी इंडिया जो वहाँ पे ओमेन राइट्स की जो वॉलेशन कर रहे हैं कश्मीर में और अनफॉर्चुनेटली हम कर रहे हैं बलूचिस्तान में तो ये क्या एक मैन मेड डिजास्टर और नहीं क्रिएट करेगा हमारे दरमियान और पीस प्रोसेस को और भी ब्लॉक नहीं कर सकता है स्पेशली बलोचिस्तान में जो मिसिंग पर्सन के इशूज है वो और डिजास्टर क्रिएट करेगा हमारे लिए तो इसको हम कैसे आप देखते हो ऑल ग्रेट क्वेश्चन एंड आई थिंक द क्वेश्चन विद इन दम सेल्स एक्चुअली कंटेन दी आंसर आई थिंक द रियली इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग इज टू आस्क द क्वेश्चन आई डोंट हैव ऑल दी आंसर दे इज नो नीट समथिंग आई कैन गिव यू के हेयर द आंसर टू योर क्वेश्चन It's just very important to keep raising those questions and to raising that voice. But of course, I mean, you know, I think uh, like, yeah, like I said that it's, uh, your, your questions contain the answers within them. So I don't think there's much more I can add to that, perhaps. So I ask you that the SARC has been a great disappointment. And it has been, yes. SARC institution yeah, versus yeah. Tamal Nehma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and, and it has been, it has been, um, uh, made ineffective because of the India-Pakistan relationship. So India-Pakistan is the elephant in the room that has to be addressed, their relationship has to be addressed. And the, if you go to the Sapan Charter at SouthAsiaPeace.com, the founding charter, you will see that we are saying we support the SARC objectives. And we re recently also had a resolution calling for SARC to be revived, and to calling for the people of the region to hold a SARC meeting. That's not the same year, you know. So, and the, and the third thing about, uh, of course, the human rights violations will create more rifts. But um, I think that that's why we need to keep raising a voice about uh, human rights violations within our own country so that not to give the other person a thing to point fingers, you know, rather than pointing fingers at the other side. We need to take care of our own, set our own house in order. And also, I think that what we, what we can do and should do is to you know show who is the bigger person with the bigger heart. We will open. The, they say everything has to be reciprocal. आपने हमें बॉम्बे में नहीं खोलने दी कंसलेट तो हम आपको कराची के कंसलेट हमने बंद कर दी. कराची used to have a consulate and then there was this फड्डा in के in बॉम्बे they wouldn't give the Jinnah house to be a consulate. So Pakistan said we will not take another space in some little place जहाँ पे we have to stick a flag out of a little window and we want that. तो उन्होंने पाक कराची की भी बंद कर दी. 
cutting off your nose to spite your face. Um, and that, the, Baba Riyaz wrote a very good piece on that, and that's on the Aman Ki Asha website about that. So, the, um, the, um, the, uh, this, um, these consulates, I mean, we, if we show, if we say that, you know, okay, does it, everything doesn't have to be exactly reciprocal. Uh, we know India, ke journalists, they used to be stationed in Islamabad, three, four journalists. India refused clearance to Pakistani nominees or whatever, so we have to remove them. So why can't we say that we have nothing to hide? We will give, you know, Kartarpur has the capacity for 5,000 visitors a day. Aap apni pe security beef up kar dein. Let them come. What are you scared of? You know, use, uh, not just Kartarpur, let people come, let them visit their families, let, let young people come and, you know, uh, travel, increase our travel and trade. Our tourism can be increased. In this process of denying people to people movement and contact, what's happened is that during the last few years, India has economically gone so far ahead that now for them, Pakistan is irrelevant. They say, okay, you know, we, TK, you don't want to trade with us because of what we are doing in Kashmir, don't. We are moving ahead regardless. Sanuki, you know. So we can say that, you know, we will open the visas, we will, open, we will allow and uh, show who is the bigger person. Then they will have that, but, but we will not because everybody is so scared. I am Arshad Yusufzai and uh, I am basically from Karachi working for the News International as a uh, covering political parties. Ji. So, can I ask a question? Ji, ji, please. So, my question is that in the two countries, especially India and Pakistan, or religious extremism or uh, religious warmongers hai uh, dusra jo agar uh, hum dekhe to national religious uh, jo political approach hai especially dono malik ke beech mein uh, political jo thinking hai leadership mein aur third jo establishment hai so aap kya samajhiye ki kaun se kaun sa wo factor hai jo ki sabse zyada relations ko affect kar raha hai aur kis pe काम करने की ज्यादा जरूरत है और ये कैसे मुमकिन है कि इन दोनों चीजों पे काम किया जाए और मतलब दोनों लोग जो है वो ज्यादा चाहे कि वो मिले रिलेशन बढ़े यू नो आई थिंक दैट दैट्स अ रियली गुड क्वेश्चन आर यू रिलेटेड टू रहीमुल्ला साहब नो अच्छा अम आई थिंक हिज सन्स नेम इज आल्सो अर्शद यस आई गॉट वेरी कंफ्यूज फॉर अ मिनट अम सो आई थिंक दैट द बिगेस्ट हर्डल यू नो इज the lack of visas is not letting people meet. When you let people meet, it will blunt the edge of hyper-nationalism, hyper-religiosity and all that because then you start to see the other, side, other person as a human and not just as the other. When you meet, when you exchange, when you sit and have a cup of tea together, when you go to a shop together, you, when, you, when you help somebody to buy something in your country, and see their gratitude and you know the way that people interact you see we've seen this during the cricket matches the biggest you know thousands of people hundreds of people were able to you know interact and pura eco system situation jo hai wo thanda pad jata hai you know so if they allow people to meet i think that will blunt that religiosity that hyper religiosity and hyper nationalism both and if we have a take this regional approach to all issues i think that is another thing that can blunt those uh, those very hard edges on, that are growing on both sides. Does, I hope that answers your question. Ziba Hashmi, and my question is that Sapan जो सपन आपकी जो एक तरह से consortium और एक तरह से आपकी advocacy group को मैं देख रही हूँ आप लोगों ने क्या जो एजुकेशन पॉलिसीज बोथ साइड्स पाकिस्तान की आपको तो ऑलरेडी मालूम ही होगा इंडिया के अक्रॉस द बॉर्डर भी दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी में कुछ साल पहले कुछ इन्होंने चैप्टर्स अपने सिलेबस में से हटाए थे और अभी इन्होंने डार्विन को भी टारगेट करना शुरू कर दिया है और बहुत सारी चीज़ें जो हैं वाइप आउट हो रही हैं तो आई वॉन्टेड टू आस कि क्या सपन ने इस चीज़ के ऊपर कोई आवाज़ उठाई है या इस चीज़ को मॉनिटर कर रहे हैं और अगर कर रहे हैं तो इस चीज़ को किस तरह से आप अवेयरनेस फैला रहे हैं कि दिस इज़ नॉट दिस्ट्री दैट वॉज देयर 
and perhaps it is being manufactured again yeah. just as we are seeing it yeah. here so, so i just wanted to ask yeah no so of course so many people in our group are monitoring that and we have uh, if you go to suppernews.com we have a we have a dossier section also in which we uh, share news that is of uh, you know like uh, with a link back to the original so we shared news about this as well and i think that this is on our radar as well that to have a session on education policies and stuff like that as well um so yeah it's a very important question and and it's it's actually there's so much already being written and so much uh, activism in india about it so we we are, we basically what we want to do is to provide support and solidarity to activists who are already working on these issues rather than jumping in and you know, giving our own thing so we want because you we see even in pakistan there are people you know uh, the activism here or the activism in, pa in india or bangladesh or whatever to be to try and support what local progressive activists are doing um, and this is some, this is an issue that i think we will definitely have some should have some have a session on at some point to ye bhi to hua tha na ke hindustan aur pakistan mein जो अप्स एंड डाउन हैं वो थोड़े से आउट ऑफ फेज़ हैं कि जब कभी यहाँ पे चीज़ें अच्छी होने लगती हैं तो वहाँ पे शायद ख़राब होने लगती हैं वहाँ अच्छी तो यहाँ ख़राब जिस ज़माने में जहाँ पे हालात बहुत ख़राब थे एजुकेशन के अंदर आइडियोलॉजिकल इंटरफियरेंस की वजह से उस ज़माने में कृष्णा कुमार की, की जो रिफॉर्मेशन थी एंसर्ट के अंदर बड़ी रिमार्केबल थी उसका बहुत बड़ा असर पड़ा मगर बाद में फिर वो रिवर्स भी हुई जैसे यहाँ भी चीज़ें रिवर्स हुई तो वो एक किस्म से ये एक आइडियोलॉजिकल बैटल ग्राउंड तो है एजुकेशन वहाँ पे भी है और यहाँ पे भी है वहाँ पे भी लोग इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं और यहाँ पे भी इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं ये बात तो है एंड एंड वन ऑफ द थिंग्स वी वॉन्ट टू डू विपन इज टू टेक इट आउट ऑफ द इंडिया पाकिस्तान इंडिया पाकिस्तान एंड ऑल्सो टू सी वट्स हैपनिंग इन अदर कंट्रीज बिकॉज दैट देन वी लर्न फ्राम ईच अदर एंड वी सी you know like we can uh, maybe uh, shine a light and take things forward in a slightly different way my name is akhtar and uh, i am a freelance journalist based in uh, islamabad uh, having lived in uh, oman for a, over a decade where uh, the cultural divide between the like uh, the divide between the expat uh, population of south asia uh, we cannot feel a barrier when uh, conversing with each other so in association with sapan can a networking platform online networking platform be made and uh, would that be possible so that people from the world can yeah. meet uh, online yeah actually one of the things i need to do is to connect with editors in the middle east and get sapan news features get them to subscribe we actually we need money also so if people want to donate please we really <laughs> need to uh to have that as well but so that is definitely because that whole area is so we definitely we should connect and talk about it yeah <coughs> great great yeah thank you boss uh, uh you among us have been the most frequent visitor to india that i know last time was 10 years ago acha <laughs> come on come on come on virtually you are you know always there and you have the longest experience first hand knowing you know our media is just another face for our state so uh, there is a limit that you can you know make a space for this site of a you know uh, narrative there so uh, you need to engage perhaps more uh, uh, enterprisingly and there i have my question to you can you help me understand why when everything else is so dramatically different between the two of us still our police behaves the same in two states <laughs> you have your provincial autonomy is there we don't have it we imagine some day that will resolve the issue very cool but if yeah. you just contrast the two i still need to ask you the question and i think there is a media gap and you are perhaps very well suited to fill that with yeah, so some credibility what we are trying to so two two things you mentioned one is you said talk about, talked about the media gap and the second you talked about why is the police the same so police is also the same in by the way bangladesh the difference is maybe sri lanka may where they had this massive peaceful protest and the police and the army did not open fire or uh, water kya kehte hain cannon or or, or baton charge or anything like that you know 
I mean, it's the colonial legacy, of course, as you know, and it's the, we, uh, you know, we come out of the colonial legacy and we start behaving like colonists, we colonize our own people. So that's the answer to the second part of your question. The first part about the media is that we are trying to, you know, uh, like our, our, um, our uh, features, which have so far only been in English because that's the common language of South Asia. But, you know, like I said, the founding charter is in multiple languages and maybe we can at some point have it in local languages as well. But our material has been uh, broadcast on GEO. It has been uh, pu published on the GEO website as well as the, the news. Those are the two in Pakistan, Friday Times, Nayador in Pakistan. And, we, you know, we're just, it's just very small right now, but it's growing. I saw, I saw we, we are reaching, we are, um, um, content has been published in about 24 media outlets around the region and the world. And hopefully we'll grow, you know, in the Middle East, Europe, and, you know, try to engage further as well. And you know, any help that anybody can give for this, we'd be very grateful. My name is Hamid Tour. Uh, I'm from uh, Kaidi Azam University. I teach is there. So um, uh, maybe you have covered this point. Uh, I, I joined the discussion a little late. But uh, anyway, uh, my question was that, that given what happened during SARC, and I think we briefly covered the failure of SARC, I was a bit curious that, again, when we define the South Asia, the region, uh, and we have seen what is happening right now, especially SEO, where the players have changed rather than again relying on uh, India and Pakistan to move forward, which I think for the last 20, 30 years, no progress and the way SARC was uh, you know, established, it didn't work. So I think it's a good idea to um, explore other possibilities in which now we have other regional players uh, especially China, mm -hmm. Russia, yep. and Iran now. So I think uh, what we are seeing is probably going beyond South Asia, because yes. if it does, it's not working. There is no reason to no. just confine to South Asia. Yeah, yeah. no, that's Move ahead. yeah, no, that's absolutely a very good point. Uh, I interviewed Mani Shankar Iyer about this uh, last year, and that if you go to the Sapan News YouTube channel, you will see Mani Shankar Iyer's uh, 15-minute interview, and he he actually made a very good point. He said that there should be not there, there, there should be multiple bilateral and multilateral engagements in the region and why stop at South Asia you know like other border like Kazakhstan and you know like and, and I, I mentioned Indian Ocean earlier also that we can you know go beyond so there's it should be like not a region like not a hard no hard borders but maybe more like a penumbra like the soft shadows of the moon you know to quote Kanak Dikshit of, of Himal South Asian who's one of my editors and friends mentors so that's what we need. We need to get away from the rigidity and hard lines and, you know, like uh, acknowledge multiplicities, multiple identities. You know, like uh, people from border areas are not just, I mean, even within Pakistan, you know, you look at Punjab, Sindh, uh, Punjab, Saraiki area, Sindh, you know, th there's no hard line where you can say, okay, this is where this ends and this begins. There's a, there's a you know, um, some kind of fluidity and, you know, cross cross um, pollination or cross culture that and that is there in all the all the border areas so yeah I, I, assalamu alaikum my name is asad hai, uh, from broadcast broadcast journalism se taluk hai mere do sawal hain eh, do part mein ek bina se ek nayar sahab se nayar sahab ne kaha ke jab kabhi wahan pe halat acche hote hain to yahan halat aise nahi hote hain ke peace talks ya jo bhi soft borders ya whatever hum peaceful रहने जब वो नहीं हो पाता तो नैया साहब से माशाल्लाह इतने वो एक्सपीरियंस से ये पूछना चाहूंगा ये बाय डिजाइन होता है आपके ख्याल में या ये बाय ऐसे ही डिफॉल्ट हो जाता है कि एक तरफ हालात अच्छे होते हैं वो नहीं हो पाते अच्छे इसका जवाब प्लीज आप जरूर दीजिएगा बिना से मेरा सवाल है कि वी आर सीइंग अ राइज ऑफ एक्सट्रीमिज्म रिलीजियस एक्सट्रीमिज्म इन इंडिया और क्या मेरा सवाल इस तरह से है कि हमने जियाउल हक देखा हमने उसको भुगता आज तक भुगत रहे हैं क्या मोदी की शक्ल में इंडिया इज हैविंग देयर मोमेंट ऑफ जियाउल हक थैंक यू आई थिंक यू काइंड ऑफ आंसर्ड योर क्वेश्चन या मे इट फील्स लाइक व्हाटएवर वी जो व्हाट व्हाट फमीदा रियाज रोट आफ्टर द डिमोलिशन ऑफ द बाबरी मस्जिद कि तुम हम बिल्कुल हम जैसे निकले अब तक कहां छुपे थे भाई you know so they are doing exactly that tum bhi karoge fatwa jari she said that you know she wrote that at that time 
So yeah, that's. Uh, but 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 my answer to that is that what I said earlier. I'll just repeat that that to stand in solidarity with our friends and comrades there who are fighting that, rather than pointing fingers at them and saying this is how bad you are. We have been that bad, and we are in some ways still bad. We blasphemy. Ke naam par kya kya ho raha hai. We, we've seen maybe some maybe maybe with this Chinese uh, person being taken to custody, maybe things will change because there is a bigger power involved now. I mean, Sri Lankan ko toh humne mar diya, and you know, they still have stood by us so much. But um, I think that having taking a regional approach, taking you know, like uh, point, looking at things in context, I think helps to sort of blunt that edge a little bit, and to rather than pointing fingers, to um, you know, sort of acknowledge the fight that people are fighting. You know, our friends are going to jail. Our, our friends and comrades there are going to jail or being disappeared or being killed, even in India. Journalists, you know, to stand in solidarity with the voice, with the resistance in India, rather than pointing fingers. I think that is what we need to do, and that is what they need to do, and they do. Our friends there do that, but of course there are those on either side who are more interested in pointing fingers and being very happy that oh look what happened to that, you know, look what happened there and that lynching there. There's that. You know, women being you know raped there, how bad they are. This this superiority complex we have to get out of. And like I said earlier, that you know, अपने गिरेबान में झांके पहले and fix our own house before we start pointing fingers. So that might be one way to, you know, blunt that religiosity, that hyper religiosity. And that is not the majority. You know, then there as nor was it in Pakistan ever. And you know, we so. But mayor, you there's a question for you also. नहीं मेरा ख्याल ये है कि आपका ये शायद जवाब मिल भी गया कि गालिबा ये इंटरनल डायनामिक्स ही हैं जो डिटरमिन करती हैं कि क्या हो रहा है वहाँ पे क्या हो रहा है यहाँ पे और बहुत सी चीज़ें ऐसी हैं कि जो कि बहुत ही ज़्यादा इंटरनल फैक्टर्स हैं डिटरमिन करने वाले तो एक दूसरे पर असंदाज होने वाले इन तमाम इशूज़ में बहुत कम हैं मेरा ख्याल ये है कि सोसाइटीज़ जैसे जैसे बढ़ रही हैं जैसे जैसे अपने आप को इस नए ज़माने के अंदर एडजस्ट uh, करने की कोशिश कर रही हैं वो मुख्तलफ अंदाज में कर रही हैं जैसे हमारे यहाँ आपको मालूम है कि uh, अभी भी बहुत बड़ा एक पोलिटिकल ट्रेंड है जिसमें हम समझते ये हैं कि हमारी तमाम मुसीबतों की का मदावा जो है वो मज़हब की तलीमत के अंदर है और हम अभी तक उसको uh, समझते हैं हमारे यहाँ बहुत से लोग हैं जो समझते हैं कि वही एक हाल है हमारे पास और हम उसका हम यादा भुगतते चले आ रहे हैं इतने अरसे से और अभी भुगतते रहेंगे बिल्कुल मेरे ख्याल में यही चीज़ जो है इंडिया के अंदर हो रही है मगर इस वजह से नहीं कि पाकिस्तान में हुई बल्कि इस वजह से कि वहाँ पे जो सियासत जैसी की है इन्होंने उस सियासत में उनको उसी में फ़ायदा नज़र आया उसी को उसी को वो ज़्यादा एक्सप्लाइट कर सकते थे तो ये इसमें एक दूसरे पे असरअंदाज होने वाली मूवमेंट्स नहीं है ये अटोनोमस है ये मेरा ख्याल है ओके आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन व्हिच वाज एक्चुअली आस्क्ड बाय नैय साहब इनिशियली द दैट वाज दैट शुड वी ट्राई टू रीच आउट टू द टॉप अ लेवल बिकॉज़ वी आर डूइंग समथिंग एट ऑन आवर साइड एज यू हैव द योर आंसर वाज दैट ओके वी आर डूइंग आवर स्टफ एंड दे आर डूइंग आवर स्टफ आई थिंक इज इट enough that we should do our worst of and leave That's them it's never there. enough and what apna introduce bhi kar de sahi ji not uh, everybody knows you i mean i know you but not everybody knows. okay said ahmed rid i am uh, basically uh, assistant professor in kaizen university but my research is on india pakistan uh, people to people contacts and uh, aman ki aasha and part of aman ki aasha as well sapan as well uh, so my question basically is that uh, because we last uh, few years i mean last year actually um, um, two big personalities and they had some connection you know like i mean um ayer rahman saab and uh, um so we we lost connection to the top level here similarly because of being modi and bjp in power there the peace lobby in india also lost the connection to the indian government in a way so that has affected in my understanding mm. our reach to the top level in a way yeah. so is there any need I, i think there is some need to reach out to the that top level because if we are keep doing our stuff and just leave it there then we are not yeah. really moving forward so yeah. we have to do something to you know connect 
ourselves with that top level yeah. to make some impact. Yes. Thank you. No, you're absolutely right. We do need to do that. And like you said, that you know the, those connections have kind of been broken because we don't really have कोई पहुंच नहीं है हमारी nice तरफ ना उस तरफ कहीं ना but we do have to but we do need to do that and I mean we can discuss how to do that but that that has to be done behind the scenes not everything has to be done in public I think we have to find ways to reach but right now I think हमारी सुनवाई वहाँ पे नहीं है but that doesn't mean we should not try we should सर शायद सबसे जरूरी चीज जो करने की है वो ये है कि ہم اپنے ہاں کے حکمرانوں کو پہ زور دینے کی کوشش کریں کہ ان کا سیکیورٹی کا کانسرٹ غلط ہے وہ جس قسم کی سیکیورٹی کے خاطر سب کچھ کرتے رہے ہیں اس نے ہمیں آج اس حال میں پہنچایا ہے اگر وہ اس کو بھول جائیں اور اس کی مثالیں ہیں ہمارے سامنے بڑی اچھی مثالیں ہیں کچھ عرصے تک اسی کی دہائی تک کوئی کوئی اگر کہتا کہ مجھے انٹرنیشنل ڈائلنگ والا ٹیلی فون چاہیے تو وہ اتنا بڑا سیکیورٹی پرولم تھا کہ اس کی اس کی اس کی اجازت نامہ جی ایچ کیو سے ملتا تھا اس کے بغیر نہیں ہوتا تھا اس وقت ہر شخص کے پاس انٹرنیشنل ڈائلنگ ہے پورے ملک میں اور یہ کہ ٹیلی فون پہلے تو بہت کم لوگوں کے پاس ہوتا تھا آج ہر ایک کی تقریباً ہر ایک کے پاس ہے کیا ہو گیا ہماری سیکیورٹی کا کوئی بڑا نقصان تو نہیں پہنچا اور ایسے ہی اور بہت سی چیزیں ٹیکنالوجی نے آپ کو کہاں کہیں کہ کہیں مات کر دیا قائد آزم یونیورسٹی میں جب ہر سائنسز والوں نے کہا کہ ہمیں ڈیٹیل نقشے چاہیے پیچھے کے ٹریکس کے تاکہ ہم سروے وغیرہ کر سکیں تو انہوں نے کہا یہ تو بہت ہائی ٹاپ لیول سیکیورٹی کا مسئلہ ہے یہ ہم نہیں کر سکتے آپ کو اجازت نہیں دے سکتے اور اب آپ سب کے سامنے ہیں کہ کتنے آسانی کے ساتھ سب چیزیں ویلے بول ہیں تو ان کے سیکیورٹی کے کانسپٹ سارے غلط نکلے ہیں کہنے کی ضرورت ہے کہ آپ کی سیکیورٹی جو ہے اس میں آپ تبدیل کر دیجئے سب سے بڑی سیکیورٹی جو ہے وہ اس سے ہوگی جو ہیمن سیکیورٹی سے آپ حاصل کر سکتے ہیں اگر آپ وہ کر لیں گے تو اس کے بعد آپ کی پریشانیاں جو ہے وہ کم ہو جائیں گی لیکن یہ بات ہے کہ پھر ان کے اپنے جو چھوٹے موٹے مفادات ہیں جن کی پرورش وہ کرتے ہیں ان کو نقصان پہنچے گا یہ بات درست ہے My name is Salima Rasool Having said a lot of things about the two nations Pakistan and India and we know that there are a lot of complications in these both countries regarding relationship and all these things I just want to ask you about your vision how hopeful you are uh, in coming years that these uh, two nations uh, would soften their borders and will have good relationship, at least working relationship with each other. What is your vision? So I'll actually answer that question, but I'll also uh, take forward a little bit uh, what to say uh, question. Uh, part of how we are reaching, trying to reach policymakers is through the media, through our uh, through Sapa News, getting it published in multiple media outlets around the region. So I wanted to add to that. And that also kind of comes to your question, you know, like, so peace is a process like democracy. It's not an event, right? And I don't know if we will ever see that softening in our lifetimes. But we have to be part of the, we can't stop working at that because we think we are not going to get. That's, we have to keep working at it and keep, you know, denting that narrative because if we don't, then, there's a, then they have a walkover. So we can't give a walkover, right? Like Siddiqui Sahib said one time, Aziz Siddiqui Sahib, you know, Marhoom, when there were very bad things in Pakistan at one point, so I went to see him, he was at the HRCP. For those who don't know him, he was editor of Frontier Post before. And then he was a co-chairperson of the, co-director of HRCP, Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, along with I.A. Rahman. Siddiqui Sahib was sitting there and I went and I sort of, I said, we have to cry and cry that Siddiqui Sahib is so bad in Pakistan, this is, that is. He heard me out, then he knows that pipe and he just looked at me and he said, so what do we do? Let's put the hands on the hands. You know, what should we do? Should we just lay down our weapons? No. What weapons do we have? We have our words. That's the, we, we, we are not going to engage in violence. We are not going to engage in, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, like uh, personal attacks and being, you know, we will keep doing what we are doing while keeping 
what Iqbal Ahmed, uh, Dr. Iqbal Ahmed referred to as the moral high ground. Because if you start follow, you know, uh, uh, doing the same dirty tricks that they are doing, so that's what, uh, to what I said earlier about social media responsibility, ethics and all that. I think it's incumbent upon everybody who considers themselves to be part of the peace democracy, democracy movement to be, to be responsible about it and to keep taking those steps. We can't stop taking those steps. I don't see that as an option. I mean, and I don't, and hope, ka to, you know, like Rahman Saab said, you know, of course, there's always hope. If there was no hope, we wouldn't be able to survive. We have to have hope. But that doesn't mean that I have any illusions that this is going to happen in the next 5, 6, 10 years, maybe even 20. I don't know. We don't know what the outcome will be, but we have to keep being part of the journey, keep that process going, I think, in my humble opinion. Uh, my name is Daniel Kursheed. I am a regular here at the Black Hole. Uh, my question uh, is: My question is that uh, if you go on the pol go to the policy le making level, basically when we make a, I mean, majority of our policy, foreign relations policy, in regards to Afghanistan and India, is heavily influenced by our military. So how are we supposed to engage uh, peop people diplo diplomacy as? Uh, <laughs> Because, I mean, basically, that is basically our constraint from uh, all that. Because uh, yeah. our, uh, we have military interests of uh, Kashmir, and uh, in Afghanistan, we have the strategic depth uh, yes. interests. Yes. So how are we supposed to encourage that? Uh, yeah, hmm? well, that's a very really good question. Um, and I don't have a clear-cut answer, except to basically repeat what I said earlier, that we have to use the weapons that we have, which is our words, and, uh, you know, our, whatever in whatever way we can uh, come together on a collective platform and just make our uh, you know make our narrative heard not by shouting louder than them but by being consistent and you know factual and you know um, with authenticity not uh, not not react to others but to f keep forging our narrative rather than the, reacting to their narrative. Like I said earlier, you know, they got to do what they got to do and we got to do what we got to do and we will not change our kennis. But we can keep putting our point of view out there to the public and getting people to say that yes, this is and And create a public pressure because the power of the people, I think, is still, is still a power to be reckoned with. Uh, that's true. But uh, as... Uh uh, but uh, then uh, another question arises is that uh, basically the military who make I mean who heavily influences our foreign policy as uh, if we pressurize all them to like just to leave out the Kashmir issue and the uh, uh, the strategic depth uh, theory and all that then uh, basically there'll be a job security issue so <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure yeah. they will be able to buy into the public pressure. We, we don't know, but we can suggest that you know you can you know uh, keep the jobs by getting them to do you know useful things like building roads and uh, uh, hospitals and things. Okay. people to people contact wali move the movement the purani. चले वहाँ तक चले पाकिस्तान इंडिया पीपल्स फोरम ऑफ पीस एंड डेमोक्रेसी वो ज़्यादा इफेक्टिव थी या सपन ज़्यादा इफेक्टिव है? I don't think it's either or. Sapan is built up, is has built upon those. Sapan is not claim. We are not claiming that we have done something new. We are building upon previous initiatives like PIPFPD, like Aman Ki Aasha, like South Asians for Human Rights, like Himal South Asian, like you know whatever. So we are building upon those uh, things, and yeah, those, those can also continue. नहीं मगर देखो ना कि उस ज़माने में PIPFPD जो था जिसके events की गूंज हर तरफ फैलती थी सपन की इवेंट्स की गूंज फैलती है हर तरफ आई डोंट नो आई मीन मेरे नहीं ख्याल मेरे ख्याल है कि ये तो इतना because it was a very limited intellectual uh, thing. It was it was what we call the Jola Brigade, basically, right? In the whole what? civil society context has just been dislocated. 
But the point, no, but the, but the, but the point is, but the point is that we are building upon that those networks. Many of those people are involved in this as well. It's not a question of which is more effective. At that time, that was effective. Right now, and then after that, Aman ki Asha was effective, and now. Uh, maybe Sapan is effective also, but PIPFTPD is not dead. They are still working. I mean, they're just bringing out a new journal. They just uh, they are uh, still act, uh, you know active in some way. So it's not either or. I think we need to keep working in conjunction. Even my question was done. I have done that PIPFTPD, which was the novelty of that time, because before that there was no activity. So the novelty is a novelty. It spreads and spreads. For a few years at least. Follow up करने वाले जो हैं, वो चूंकि उसी के काम को आगे ले जा रहे होते हैं, एक आस्था-आस्था उनके अंदर इंटिज़ियाज़म जो है, वो खत कम हो जाता है, तो उसकी वजह से उनका इतना इफ़ेक्टिव वो इफ़ेक्टिव नहीं होते वो माशरे में। तो एक बात तो ये ये है, मगर साथ-साथ ये है कि जो इंटेलेक्� issues ko discuss karte hain wagara wagara I hope ke sapan ka sapan ke indar ke ke kaamon mein utni hi intensity hoogi jitne pehle thi sorry aap nahin nahin she's saying wait band kare bas she's saying bahut ho gaya dari program ke khatam honne ka time hai sab ma ghali dekh raha hon do minute hai bhi bolne di jay achcha to ठीक है अगर अगर सुनने वाले थक गए नहीं वैसा माइक है तो वी जस्ट वी जस्ट रैपिंग अप वी जस्ट रैपिंग अप आप कुछ कहना चाहेंगे इस मौके पे नहीं नहीं आप दो नहीं आप दो मिनट रुकेंगे दो मिनट रुकें ये एक सवाल ये कर रहे हैं फिर आपको माइक दे दो मिनट रुकें अब देर से आए और जल्दी जाना ये क्या बात हुई? अब आप बैठे दो मिनट, अब आप बैठे, अब आप दो मिनट बैठे हैं। My name is Afan and I'm quite regular here in Blackpool. I don't know, Afan? Afan, Afan, yes. Okay, a South Asia Union is just impossible. How I am saying that? The one point is that this region has the heterogeneity. You are saying that the, if the Germany and the French can negotiate and they become friends, they help uh, Pakistan and India cannot be. Let me tell you point, this, the whole nation has quite diverse uh, culture as well and mm -hmm. they have the different political culture as yeah. well and different mm -hmm. economic culture as mm -hmm. well and different historical culture as well. Okay. So this, uh, these both nation and this whole region has the government from the theocracy to secularism from democracy, and these are all. So this region is a, a quite heterogeneous. So when a region is a heterogeneous, so uh, you it, this union cannot be possible. And other view is if you will really look into the lens of the foreign powers, you have seen the. European Union and the ASEAN and the AUKUS and the Quad like that's all the coalition had happened. You say whenever this happened, the superpower has some role in it, mm -hmm. okay? But if you look at in the South Asia Union, the superpower is not interested in it. They don't want to put the uh, uh, on the negotiation table to both Pakistan and India as well. And the third point is that uh, is that uh, the India has a quite a bellicose nature. How? If you look at that, the Pakistan had uh, quite historically want to engage with India as well, but there the uh, religious fanaticism is quite at pinnacle right now in India and uh, Pakistan as well. But uh, the uh, and the fourth one is the Scotty establishment. Okay, if we look at a Scotty establishment, Pakistan and India Scotty Scotty establishment is uh, quite reluctant toward the South Asia peace. And the fifth point is as well, if we look at, at the SARC article number 10, that is going to be a very good point. The, this article 10 is talking about that is, SARC is not too going to be uh, involved into the more contentious issue like the Kashmir, like the Exciation, like the Ladakh issue. So my point is that this South Asia Union is just a utopia. How? Look at it, the 25% of the Asian people are in living in the South Asia if you compared into the world population. Our just contribution is 3.95%. If we look at, so, at the European Union right now, yes. Uh, my, no, your yeah, like my, you made a lot of yeah, points, yeah, so you're asking me so a question. I am saying that uh, the South Asia Union is just impossible and how are you going to defend your so, thesis? Uh, yeah. I, I, so I can, uh, I'll just quickly answer Piramapko Mike, please. Just, so, 
I don't have to defend a thesis. I am only putting out an idea. I don't have any money for this. I don't have an army for this. I'm just saying that this is a good idea. And why don't we work towards it? And also, maybe if not a South Asia union, then why not a, un a region with soft borders to let people trade, travel, meet, and so on? Um, and all your points are absolutely well taken. But we have to, I, I think, and you may not agree, you're saying it's impossible. And I'm saying I don't believe anything is impossible. And I'm saying that we need to keep taking the steps to recognize that this is a region, absolutely it's a heterogeneous region, but at the same time there's a lot of commonalities and we can gain a lot by, we can gain more by cooperating than by, uh, than behaving in the way we are currently behaving. So either we can say, okay, this is impossible, let's stop, or we can say, this is an idea that's worth thinking and deliberating on and just discuss it. So that's all I'm doing. Great. Thank you. I think we should all thank you, Sita. Kishwa Naik to Mike. Kishwa Naik to Mike, I think. I was told that when I was in Pakistan, I had 500 kilo of tomato. So, I was so excited to come to the border and I would like to take 500 kilo of tomato. So, I would like to take 500 kilo of tomato. So, you would like to go to the South Asia Union. How would it happen? पहले पहले अपनी जवानी में हम बॉर्डर पे क्रॉस करके और इंडिया जाते थे और अफगानिस्तान जाते थे और बांग्लादेश जाते थे अब हम तो लगता है बजीरिस्तान भी नहीं जा सकते चिन भी नहीं जा सकते कहीं सही है तो यूनियन तुम्हारे एक खाब है कि कुछ लोगों को तुमने इकट्ठा कर लिया है जो तुम्हारी तरह सोचते हैं कि ये सब लोग जो सोचते हैं ये तो इंडिया पाकिस्तान ज़्यादा सोच रहे हैं साउथ एशिया के बारे में कौन सोचता है जो बैंकॉक जहाँ हर रोज़ ऐसे ही उठ के चले जाते थे। उन्होंने इतने लंबे टिकट लगा दिए, इतने ज़्यादा उन्होंने बंदिशें लगा दिए। आप लोगों के करतूत हैं सेंग के आप पे सब जगह बंदिशें लग जाती हैं। उससे भी 50 साल पहले जाइए, तो यूरोप में किसी जगह वीज़ा था ही नहीं। था ही नहीं। हाँ, तो वो ज़माने बहुत बदल بس کے قرائے کے پیسے نہیں ہونے ایسے یونین کرنے کا کیا آپ کے وہ جو آئیت کے قبر کے پیسے نہیں ہیں تھا کیا آپ کی جو نظم آپ نے مجھے کل سنائی تھی کہ آئی ایم ایف کے قبر کے پیسے نہیں ہیں تو آپ کیا بات کریں so but the point is this the point I'll just conclude with this maybe we can just wrap up I'm just saying that like I said in answer to your question and you have made those points absolutely that's all is there somebody else speaking or should we wrap up okay so to just Last say that, to, yeah, just just to say that Good you know, uh, I appreciate all the comments and questions, and also the skepticism and uh, you know questioning, and I think it's important to keep talking. That's all I'm saying. Thank you very much. <laughs>